news, some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date, May 13th, 2022. Time, 346. A little bit later than normal. Hi, everybody in chat. Joining me today. Hi, Zanga. <laughs> Hi, Asian Avenue. Hi, Black Planet. Hi, MySpace. Hi, GeoCities. Hi, Angel Fire. Hi, my <laughs> Hi everything. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. It is the news. The 101st episode. Whoa, we made it. We can't celebrate every episode, but we can We can try. Uh, hi, MSN Messenger. Hi, AIM. Hi, Trillion. Hi, ICQ. <laughs> Hi, Merc. <laughs> like, let's we'll keep on going. <laughs> we have lots. <laughs> Many have come and gone, but one has shown, shown staying power and lots and lots of, of, of controversial uh, stories. Surprised you remember all those things? I don't know why. Raid call. Hi, Discord. Oh, hi, Discord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Discord. Vent. I guess so. Mumble. Mum mumbles. Mumble. 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 I mumbled that for some reason. Now, if they don't count, did you make some of those up? Don't even know. No, nah, man. It's all real. Asian Avenue, real place. Black Planet, real place. Real place. <laughs> I don't know about place, but you know, on the internet. Anyways. Anyways. Speaking of social media. Some of you guys may have heard since the last episode. Certain person named Elon Musk, richest person in the world. Richest person in the world. Made an offer to buy... Twitter for 40 something, $44 billion, right? And so it was an offer that he laid out there. It was his last and final offer. I believe it was also his first, right? And it kind of came out of nowhere, okay? Not just because like, oh, well maybe things happen behind the scenes that we don't know about, but because we find out now that the deal was handled and penned so strangely that it really does kind of seem like it was a little impulsive, which Elon is not at all known to do. <laughs> Not all known. <laughs> is this like Silicon Valley episode with under 13k kids day? The COPPA? Yeah, the COPPA laws and shit that kicked in. So, so Elon Musk makes an offer today. It's on hold. It's on hold because he's skeptical about the amount of, uh, uh, about the amount of bots that are currently on the platform as a whole. And he says that the number of bots could have a, or should have, or well, the reason why it's on hold, because if there are more bots than what he originally had thought, then he's saying that then, then potentially going to go ahead and try to renegotiate a deal or walk away from the deal. Right now, the way we'll find out the way that he set this up, the way that he set this up was he went in, he made the offer before doing what's called due diligence. Now, as somebody who has taken part in the acquisition of other companies, mostly pretty small, not, not really as big as Twitter, I can tell you that due diligence is the most important part of any acquisition, period. Anytime you buy anything, you typically want to know a little bit about it before you buy it. Everybody here has done some kind of due diligence on something that they own. You looked it up first. This is an expensive purchase. Probably look it up, right? But that expensive purchase could be like a $50 game, okay? <laughs> probably not a $44 billion deal. <laughs> so in this case, Elon Musk did not do any due diligence with the company beforehand and ended up making the offer first, locking himself into a contract where if he were to walk away from it, he would have to pay upwards of a billion dollars. And I guess if the judge is feeling feisty, could actually force him to complete the purchase. So there's a lot of speculation as to why, how, th how this is playing out, why it's playing out this way. Right, because nobody really knows what his intentions are. Some people think that he's that he's trying to fuck up the stock so he could buy some buy cheap, sell high or whatever. Some people think that he just uh, is getting cold feet the purchase. Some people think that he's broke. There's a number of things that support all of these theories. 
Why the hell would you do it for 40 before billion dollars? Exactly. The old Shark Tank deal just comes later and most deals don't go through. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, <laughs> so he says, but the contract also contains a specific portion, a, a specific performance clause that a judge can cite to force Musk to complete the deal. So this is real. This is real. So he could, he could, in his current state, which is like $70 billion less net value or whatever uh, value than he was when he started the deal because everything is crashing, um, including his own stock, which which took a pretty significant dip down to 671 or something like that uh, after he had made the announcement that he was going to purchase uh, Twitter. You could see, and there's some kind of clause or some kind of trigger or something that happens whenever you put your stocks up as the collateral for a uh, for for a purchase where if they lose X percent of their value, then you can't make the deal or there's something there's something that happens that's bad for Elon. Right. So this this is because I'm not this kind of wealthy. Not really any kind of wealthy, uh, but because I'm not this kind of wealthy, a lot of this stuff on how they end up like buying things when they don't have value and all that stuff is kind of still mystifying to me. But I did find this video. Some of you guys may have seen this where Trevor Noah from The Daily Show does a pretty good breakdown of what it's like, what it means. One of the best examples, right? People argue. We'll play a clip from this here. Let me turn it up. Tax billionaires on the shares that they hold in a company because it is an unrealized gain, right? So they go like, yeah, you, you're worth 300 billion, but we can't tax you on the, the, those stocks because you haven't sold the shares. So you don't like have the money, right? But you're worth the money, but you don't have the money. And so and I understand the argument. They go like, no, you don't have it. It's just what it's worth because it could also crash and then you have nothing. So we can't tax you on it. Then I'm like, okay, I understand that. So you can't tax the people on a thing because they, they don't have it. It's just there. Okay, fine. <laughs> then Elon Musk offers to buy Twitter, right? He offers to buy it. And then he says in his offer, he goes, I'm putting up my Tesla stock as collateral. Then I'm like, so you, you do have it. <laughs> then he's like, no, 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 no. I don't have it. I don't have it. I'm just going to say as collateral. So then they accept the offer. He now buys Twitter. Now that they've accepted his offer, he now goes to private equity and banks and like other rich people and whatever. He goes like, can you guys borrow me the money to buy Twitter? And then he's like, I'm, I wanna buy Twitter because I don't wanna sell any of my Tesla shares. So I wanna use your money to buy Twitter. And then it's like, but then they're like, what are we loaning it against? And he's like, well, my Tesla shares. <laughs> then I'm going like, wait, wait, so, so you, you can, you can buy a thing based on what you have, yes. But when we want to tax you, you can say, I don't have it. <laughs> do, do, do you hear what I'm saying here? Okay, so there's your crash course on how these guys buy things and how their, their, their value of whatever it is, things that don't exist, can be used to purchase other items, for example, Twitter. So... <laughs> As you can see, it's a bit of a scam. It's a bit of a, it's a bit, it's a scam. It's a scam because the markets are extremely volatile. They're all over the place. I mean, I don't know how much like that Elon has in, uh, Elon invested like X amount of like, I don't know how many into Bitcoin and that lost like a ton of money over this past month. Uh, I mean, it's down to under 30,000. It was like over 40,000, I think like even under a month ago. Uh, Ethereum is down by like 30 something percent over this past month. Doge is down like 30% over this past month. Some, some new coin or whatever, some stable coin came out, Luna or whatever, and it just fucking vaporized like instantly. Destabilizing, destabilizing everything else. Like there's, there's all this stuff that happens where like we don't really know what the value of somebody's stock is. Just because it says in the stock market doesn't mean that shit can't change. We look at Tesla stock and we see that he went from a thousand dollars a share to to a low of seven hundred twenty eight dollars a share. Like that's huge. Times how many millions of stock he's putting up as collateral. And all of this is because he said something because he's, oh yeah, I'm going to do something. I'm going I'm to I'm change. I'm going to buy Twitter or whatever. I'm playing it down. He's going to just say something. He's going to make a transaction. And that pissed off a lot of people or they lost uh, interest in the stock or whatever. They decided to sell the stock, lowering its valuation. So yeah, this is, this is a really 
weird like you have stock in a company but you could use it to leverage against purchases that you could make such as the twitter deal so some people are saying it's because it's the tesla the tesla stock has tanked so much that he's now no longer have the money he no longer has the money or the collateral to make the purchase uh they say it's because the um well, let me see. Let me see. Uh, they say it could be because of this this uh, this ruling that came out of the Fifth Circuit of Texas that says um, those are the rules that he just made up. Uh, Elon is solvent. Uh, that said that in the state of Texas, it is illegal to censor or something. This came out like today, but it is like it is you cannot moderate based off of some your uh, people's like freedom of speech on social media or something it's a very confusing and very strange ruling uh and even after i've read it it still is strange so it says here so what does this mean well texas is now a mess for any social media company operating in texas and daring to do something as basic as stopping harassment and abuse on your platform now opens you up to significant litigation and potential fines so texas has base has made it so that People can sue a social media company if they feel like their posts or whatever are moderated because of their beliefs, right? So because be, it could be a flat out lie, right? But somebody still has the option to just, well, I'm going to go ahead and sue you now because of blank. Just the operating social media in Texas. Easy. Yeah, you would think so. They, they I mean, f furthermore on this... <laughs> A judge was sure Twitter isn't a website. Now tech law could get messy. It says a panel of three federal appeals court judges on Monday seemed to struggle with basic tech concepts and the results could signal an unexpected victory for conservative, uh, cons conservative, oh, I lost my spot, conservative critics of the legal approach underpinning modern social media. So they're trying to say that, oh wait, well, these guys don't, they, they don't understand technology, period. One of them saying that they didn't think that it was even a website or something. Uh, I, I tweeted out something just like last week or whatever. It was like, we got to stop like get putting these people in positions that are just like really old. Like this don't, they don't understand technology. And whenever technology does something they don't like, they're immediately offended by it as if the technology chose them for some reason. And so this, this is those screaming ass boomers who are, lobbying to have these protections removed so that way they can continue to just say random shit on the internet and not get censored i just it's just it's and they don't even know what it is they don't even know what it is <laughs> you were bad for your police you're bad for your texas yeah the ruling bans uh banning because someone is in texas too i mean i can't you just like firewall the whole state I mean, it's one state out of an entire world of countries, right? Like, I've got to be amazing if that, could, that would happen, but it's not going to. So, uh, kind of sad that it's standard that people are making laws about things they don't actually know anything about. That I mean, I, I feel like it's always been that way, but we're we're all now like very privy to all this information, right? Before these decisions were just being made, and we were just kind of like, okay, well, that's a weird decision, but whatever. But now we have like first or secondhand accounts that are coming out of or firsthand accounts. We're the secondhand account of like things that are actually happening in the in the in the finer details of our governments and our tech comp our tech companies, and so we're able to piece together what's really happening happening and the major and, and, and the census is that these motherfuckers have no idea what they're talking about they don't understand the technology and they're making decisions based off of like old old thoughts from like the industrial era or something i don't know <laughs> like they're just making the shit up they don't care about what's written down they just want the w yeah they just want the w we'll do a little information a little, little misinformation spreading it's cool how, how can they make a judgment on based on what they don't know I mean, <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> there, it's a bunch of pipes. GOIP and even further IP does not mean shit. Uh, anything to a judge who isn't stupid. Yeah. Uh, the ruling will never stand. Just have to wait for it to go up the chain to, to a more competent court. Well, well, we think that. We think that. The, but depending on where, where it goes, how high it goes, we don't know what the highest court in the land is going to say now. This is apparently... It's, fucking wild wild west over there uh straight down to the actual years the era of 1800s you mean like the supreme court i mean like the supreme court man 
<laughs> so the thing is with all this, <clears throat> and the reason why we're talking about it is because, of course, it's Twitter. I mean, we all kind of revolve around Twitter. Most of us do anyways. Um, it's where we get all of our news from. But all of this has, like, result, all of this, like, hubbub that Elon is doing has, like, created actual ripples and actual effects to the company. So even if he ends up backing out of the deal, some damage has already been done. Uh, one of the execs that ended up leaving was the co-founder of uh, Periscope. Uh, and he was just like, oh, I'm sure my team's going to do great, but I am out of here. <laughs> they were told that they're going to be free. They're freezing hiring. They're making changes to some of the, some of the ways they do business and everything internally. There's just a lot of <clears throat> there's just a lot of, of stuff that they're trying to do internally in order to try to pare down uh, some of the cost of operation. So that way it looks more um, more attractive during an actual transaction i don't know why it matters you already made the offer but you know um see this has a great track record yeah there was a story i saw up there that there was some technicality that could stop this uh deal regardless of anything else trying to find it uh the the was it the technicality on the on the on the uh cost of the stock that he leveraged against against his position in the deal because that i would understand that's the case but despite all of this despite all these rumors elon musk himself says that he is still in he says he's still committed to the acquisition. Um, <clears throat> he's the one that tweeted out that the deal was on hold. The Reuters account or the Reuters um, uh, article. Uh, so he said he's still committed to the deal. But Snoop says he's down to do this right now. Snoop says, may I have to buy Twitter now. Going to replace the boy of directors with Jimmy from my corner, Fish Fry, Tommy Chung, and the guy from with the ponytail on CNBC. First line of business, free internet on airplanes. $20, $29 for one hour is bullshit. Everyone gets a blue check mark. Even the bots with 10 letters in the name. Hit you in the DM, just say hello. Now, nah, fuck those bots. <laughs> Don't worry, Snoop will save us. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's how you do it. There you go. Boom. Check marks for everybody. <laughs> Free internet. Do it, Snoop. <laughs> so the deal is looking pretty shaky. Uh, everything surrounding Elon Musk is looking pretty shaky. And I say everything. Uh, everything surrounding Twitter and then uh, uh, crypto and everything. Basically, all of his like internet Twitter dealings. SpaceX and all that shit. It's, it feels fine. Tesla stock is being weird. Uh, but... But yeah, it's there's there's other there's other ripples that are occurring as well. Martha, thank you so much. Alerts turned off, but you the best there too. Uh, <clears throat> we want Snoop to save you. Snoop almost our selling NFTs, dog. That Snoop, that's right, that's right, that's right. It's the best. It's the best time to get into NFTs. We just had a uh, uh, Square Enix. Square Enix decided it's going to go ahead and sell off a chunk of their uh, their their studio collection. Including, um, uh, oh, well, there's the IPs right here actually. This is including uh, Tomb Raider, uh, uh, Deus Ex, Thief, and Legacy of Cain, which is a which is a game title I've not heard in quite some time. Was that you can't lose any money when you're on zero? Who do they sell it to? They sold to, they sold it to an independent group, the Embracer Group. Uh, which I believe owes a bunch of other things. Uh, I think there's probably just a collection. They're just collecting up studios. Um, <clears throat> legacy of Kane has a legacy in my heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I love that game. Such a cool experience. I mean, like early, early open world. I love that. It's so good. Um, and so this happens on May 3rd. May has been a really bad month for crypto. Like I said, really, 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 really. Yeah, Embracer is huge. It's that they have a lot. They have a lot of games under their belt. Um, play the first Legacy Kane on demo disc previously ages ago. Would love a remake or a new game. Well, now it's in other people's hands. Now, what do they plan on doing with the money? They're going to reinvest it into crypto. Uh, they're going to turn around. They're going to reinvest it into. I don't want to say sorry, not crypto, into blockchain technology. Sorry, I'm mean, going to rescind that. Sorry. Um, they're going to they're going to uh, take some of that money, kind of trim up on expenses spend it on uh, uh on their blockchain technology it says right here is this company's commitment to ramp up with spending on blockchain the technology behind many of the cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens led to some backlash to social media um of course it did because <clears throat> we're all very skeptical about nfts at all epic period 
Yeah, Square Enix has been seeking to offload this part of its business to restructure and focus on its investment. I mean, I can't believe you would just you would just sell Laura Croft like that, but I guess you can. I guess you can. And then you turn around, you can spend it on on blockchain technology, which is absolutely just tanking right now. Uh, commitment to crash their own company, exactly. My man Omni. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But joining them, joining them in the uh, in the bad timing Olympics, a scammer sold them on this bullshit. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Lord, is this better than Square Enix? I'll pass you Laura Croft game. It's pretty good. Uh, Hospital Records, very popular drama based label. Also, just recently announced that they're going to be stepping uh, stepping into the NFT realm. Very bad timing because NFTs are basically useless right now. Point not useless. They've always been relatively useless. Uh, <laughs> but, but in its current form, it's pretty much worthless right now. Uh, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean also, also has their own NFTs that they're going to be launching uh, and on, Mar on May 10th. Like, if it was already tanking at this point. If if any of these guys have just, like, decided to just pull up, I don't know, the Robinhood account or something and is taking a quick peek, they probably don't seen. There's a bad time to do this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, no! He said, what? No! Oh, no! Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's 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 a bad time to be doing anything NFT-related, uh, for sure. Uh, I, even some of even some of the staunchest supporters that I've seen who are always trying to, like, look at the look at the uh, the positive side uh, of of all of these NFTs um, uh, scandals and whatnot uh, is also showing signs of cracking. YouTube account is full of fake Mr. Bean episodes. Mr. Bean's whole group has been ripping money off the character for years. YouTube account is full of fake Mr. Bean episodes. Aww. All these NFT bros making fun of poor people who are now crying about people making fun of them because they're poor. Yeah, a lot of people uh, uh, lost a lot of money in this. I mean, even I lost money. I lost money in, well, okay, I didn't lose money because I didn't sell. I also haven't, like, I haven't done any transactions in crypto in a long time. Uh, but the money that I had in there has depreciated by probably like 25, 30% or something. I mean, along the lines of, crypto across the board i diversified enough but it doesn't matter because everything has dropped by like a third <laughs> 2.8 million to 1k person hold luna yes exactly like if you're holding on to like one thing and you're like oh this is going to be the one it's not going to be the one it's probably not going to be the one you should you should diversify listen diversify your investments i learned that from wu-tang uh all yeah all, oh yeah i heard about the weird things about the guy running uh the mr bean youtube account i've heard anything about this is this like a bob ross thing but like Mr. Bean's still alive, Rowan Axon, Rowan Axon, where they're just like milking his, but he's not getting, a, I don't know. Hopefully Rowan Axon is living like a king right now, as he should be. As he should be. Oh, pretty much? Okay. I figured. Someone else who's at the, who's in the, uh, the, the late start, <laughs> the, the, the bad timing Olympics for NFTs. Uh, this is an actor who uh, is currently working on creating uh, NFT art. Uh, is an actor that some of you guys may actually be familiar with. Uh, let me see if I get this video up here uh, so you guys can see. <clears throat> let me see. Oh, this drink game was a mistake. Oh yeah, you 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 done goofed. You done goofed. Listen carefully. Here. Okay. Which one? The one my office? Yeah, the one that is his phone. Hey, can you hang on real quick? Just stay over there, okay? No, come back over here, okay? Okay. Hey, that's a car, no? That's where I'm going. Yeah. Oh. I'll see. Central 36 will be 10 seconds. Okay. I'm gonna stop right- Oh, shit. I'm gonna stop right there. If you can't read the text, this is Ezra Miller, the star of, well, The Flash, basically. Uh, and he's he's already now been busted twice for harassing the locals, basically, in uh, Hilo, Hawaii. The, the Hilo is on the big island in Hawaii. So if you look at the island, it's the big one. So just to go a little bit further and how it ties into, into what we're talking no, no, about. No, 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 I got assaulted and I started filming. Okay, let's, show talk, you the video. let's talk stories outside. Sorry, Movie Miller, Flash, yeah. That's him right there. Now listen. I got assaulted in this bar twice in a row. I filmed myself when I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. What's your name? What's your badge number? Tell me your name and your badge number. I'm going to turn it up a little bit louder. Those are pretty quiet. They still make DC movies? Yeah. <laughs> 
assaulted for any and assaulted in this bar twice in a row. I filmed myself when I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. What's your name? What's your badge number? Tell me your name and your badge number. What? Assaulted for making crypto art. NFT crypto art. <laughs> Anyways, so he's been arrested. Uh, all of his production, everything, every every production that he's been a part of has been put on hold. Uh, too, <laughs> too drunk to outrun the cops. Now. <laughs> I wouldn't even mention the story, but he did mention that he was on NFT crypto art. Kind of had to bring that in. <laughs> there was like a ask about the guy at the bars if he makes NFT crypto art. Yeah. Just weird, man. Lots of DC series are canceled. Ooh. Just stick with the Batman. Build off of that. You got a good base. Just keep going off of that. Or just come up with some new shit. I don't know. Maybe not that. Next flash movie from a jail cell. <sighs> My seek is just oh. Um so there's 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 more. There's more. So in unrelated but still NFT news. The thing happened that we all know happens, but it happened anyways. You know what I'm talking about? When like somebody does a thing with NFTs and then you realize it's all stolen assets and then they get called out for it. Right? That thing, it just, it happens, right? Yeah, yeah I don't know, I, exactly. I, I don't need to explain it. Well, let me go, let me go and give you a refresher. There's a game called Paladin Strike by High Res. It's a mobile game came out, lasted for about six months and then it disappeared, right? Whoa, it's got music too. Um, it looks like this, it's a 5v5 MOBA on your phone, didn't really do too well, ended up disappearing. Right? And so... <laughs> 5v5, never more. Oh, man. <laughs> so, this game comes out called Glory Hero NFT Wars. And it has a very similar aesthetic to Paladins. Straight down to just basically stealing the assets, like just stealing the assets. Now on this page, there is no, there is no gameplay video. It shows the maps. It shows, it shows the N NFT items. You can click here. You can see all the different models and everything. There's other characters. I mean, let me see. Uh, do they have other characters? Let me load them up. Let me see where is. Uh, oh, I don't see them on here. But basically, majority of these characters are like asset rips from paladins and they think they probably got it from like a, a package or something like that that they downloaded you know on, on android you could download a package and then you could just strip it data mine it whatever um so people are calling it out on twitter of course of course they are and here you know it shows here's a sneak peek of uh of this character what is this guy's name a treal who is uh obviously a treant of some sort uh and people are pointing out oh that's grover who is also a treant and it's the same model. Just, I mean, just a little different. Other models, they added sunglasses. <laughs> like in the most pathetic way to hide that you're asset flipping. <laughs> Let's just put some sunglasses on and nobody will recognize it. <laughs> yeah, there was a, yeah, there was a Lich King icon in that grouping. That's right. Good eye. Good eye. Let me go and pull that up here. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty Lich Kingy right there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know this gets some traction this gets some traction uh yeah sunglasses and hoodie that's right i'm a totally different person now there we go you never see me come and look at that it's my disguise zero effort asset flip so they get called out by none other than the actual ceo of high res here it shows uh here it shows more assets if you want to if you want to look at this and just and just if you play paladins or paladins uh, uh strike which doesn't exist anymore then maybe look at some of the hey where might go no. <laughs> so they're called out by Stuart chisholm he says he says this is unlicensed use of of uh high res ip and we will be pursuing takedown pass with uh flow blockchain uh, apple and google play uh, and then Glory Hero NFT Wars responds and says, at the same time, our game art does learn from many game companies. If our skin design is 90% similar to yours, please point it out for us for confirmation. Thank you. 
And he responds with the most amazing response with a picture from their Twitter account, from one of their tweets, showing, if you look closely, I'm going to zoom in on this, if you look closely to the fucking hat, that is a Paladin Strike logo with a glory. It's the fucking thing. Get the goddamn thing. <laughs> it's the coldest takedown I've ever seen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, no, I don't see it. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. So... He calls him out and says, this motherfucker literally stole every character from Paladin Strike so hard that your May 11 tweet has a character of the Paladin Strike logo on it. Like, god damn. Whoo, my god, it's 5,000 K HD. <laughs> so, so they've been making, uh, they've been making some, uh, um, uh, they being the uh, Glory Hole uh, NFT group, they uh, have been making a whole lot of, what did I say? <laughs> they, they've been making a whole lot of changes to their, uh, uh, to their social media presence to uh, to eliminate some of the uh, some of the similarities that may exist between the two games. I mean, even the logo, even the I mean, just the, oh, God damn it. Let's see, Paladin Strike logo PNG. All right, we pull this up. I mean, because I know I know not everyone played play the. I know no one played the game. Okay, but I mean, come on. It, it, I mean, but, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even try. They didn't even try. But I mean, they had a reference. It was right there on the fucking hat. So they had the reference to make it, I guess. Oh, it's amazing. <sighs> God damn. I don't understand how it's possible. So uh, they do have some new branding. That they've already changed things up a little bit. Try to like separate themselves a little bit from the original. Um, it's a very unique take too. I feel like artistically, especially for especially for an NFT group, right? Who so usually. Blockchain technology, NFT bros, they're very, they're very uh, 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 passionate about the art aspect of it, right? And so I feel like this was a piece that I could really relate to, um, something that maybe they could sell as an NFT in the future. Um, and this is it right here. I feel like this is, this is good. This is, um, you're really keeping that straight. <laughs> hey, hey, we go to the same designer. <laughs> So, uh, uh. so yeah, they've changed. They changed up their uh, their their uh, uh, their aesthetic a little bit. <laughs> Should get that shirt, So yeah, they 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 straightened things out. They did say they did say that um, uh, they're going to continue. They say why we transitioned from Web 2.0 game studio to NFT game track, and they just go through and they just say we're still going to go through with developments. Uh, <clears throat> they said um, that uh, in it, and then at the end they say in addition, the art assets used in our next online games are not Paladin Strike style and concept art. They are themed on sci-fi planet-based concepts. We hope we can meet your expectations. What is a planet-based concept? Is that like if it exists? Is that like a rule 34 thing? Like it's a kind of a catch all, like if it exists kind of thing. <laughs> you want a chloral NFT war shirt? Probably some other game to rip from. Ripping spaces in your asses next time. There you go. Earth is a planet. Yeah, well, what Earth based? Plans <laughs> I better watch. Any brother patch about art while having zero fucking taste for it. Where it actually is. <clears throat> So yeah, they're still they're still gonna continue. They said they even said here at the bottom it says uh, whether Web 3.0 is the future or, or, or the next generation of the internet or a hoax. Let history be the judge. They said they're still gonna achieve this goal. They're working on three different games. They're not. They don't care. They don't care that people think that they're asset flipping or whatever. Um, but no, this is just. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, even on their site. I mean, where's their site at? Even on their site, you know, there there there's gameplay. I went to gameplay. There's no gameplay here. It's just a bunch of different maps. It doesn't actually. Just, show anything but of floating fucking jpegs <laughs> and that's it <clears throat> there's just not yeah here you go so here, here's the way that you get scammed out of money um you could earn this stuff and then you could use it and then you could destroy deflation i don't know what that means but <laughs> they received 25 million dollars in mma from singapore funds uh complete 30 hero designs next they're gonna have a beta 1.0 version going live on ios and android this is never gonna happen by the way this is never gonna happen at all but you know, I I thought that this was a like 
when high res was involved, I was like, I know I've heard with Paladin Strike. I know I've heard this before and it wasn't related to this. And so I looked it up because I thought maybe they had gotten like ripped off before by somebody else. And this was a repeating thing. And when I looked it up. I was reminded that once upon a time, high res themselves were nailed for using assets from Overwatch, which is not surprising considering it was kind of Overwatch like. They just, <laughs> the irony, I know, it's, it goes way back, man. It goes way back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, high res, getting a taste of their own medicine or whatever. They are, um, I guess we're going to actively try to pursue this and see what they could do about uh, taking down a, uh, a, <laughs> a, a, a blockchain game, which you shouldn't be able to do, right? I guess it's not out yet, so. The internet always remembers. That's right. That's right. Fucking mobile games. High has always been trash. They've had, they've had, ugh, man. <laughs> Didn't we have like, I want to feel, I see, I feel like back in the Game Breaker days, we had like direct beef with the, with uh, uh, E-Rez, who was the, who was the uh, uh, owner, founder, whatever of High res We had beef with him. It had something to do with like, we were calling him out on like Twimo or something like that for him having uh, like, for him for have for his yacht or something like yeah like a yacht or whatever it was like really expensive and we were like i don't know what we were, maybe like probably comparing it to like oh think of the servers you could have bought for whatever i don't know i don't know what it was but he was like deeply offended by that oh that's right that's right gary said that he probably like snorts cocaine or something like that on his yacht and he was like deeply offended by that he was really mad <laughs> so yeah we had personal beef with uh with e reds for a long time how funny. Yeah, they've had a turbulent, they've had a turbulent, uh, uh several, uh, years, but, but they do have, they do have a game that just keeps on going. Smite, Smite still exists. Smite's still out there. And they have, they have, I could play a little bit here. That's all you get. Slipknot! Slipknot! Now, available in Smite. The game about gods. Brings in the gods themselves. Slip who? Bitch. You know about Corey? My boy. Dang. Dang. So they're bringing in some skins. Slipknot flavored skins. Now, what you may or may not know. Let's pause this because this is blinking like crazy. What you may or may not know is that there are like nine or ten members in Slipknot. Right? It's basically a big band group. But just with metal and shit. Um, <laughs> what year is it? They're on tour right now. What are you talking about, man? They're still good. <gasps> Some kiss ripoff group. Fucking got Martha. <laughs> man. Anyways, they're all drummers. So some of them have to play other instruments. So in this case... Uh, it's a drip. Yeah, the ones that use they use like a keg. They use like a like a <laughs> keg as a drum. Dun dun dun, cling. Dun dun dun, dun, dun. cling. <laughs> dun, dun. That shit rocks, man. How can you not like Slipknot? Slipknot's the best. Anyways, so uh, they're bringing some skins out. <clears throat> they already have like a battle. They have like a battle pass or something like that. And people get like you know skins or something like that. Uh, but this is not part of that deal. Came out with nine point five on the seventeenth, I think. That's true. So it's not quite out yet. Um, but what we're seeing is we're getting some feedback. This is, uh, oh, actually, no, it is out on, on, on beta, on the beta branch right now. This was just posted a couple hours ago. I wanted to come back and take a look at it. Now there's 21 more comments, which is great. Uh, and people are saying, I'm already, ha I'm very unhappy with the Slipknot event format. I get it. It's a great crossover with big names and all. But paying the price of a whole battle pass for just one skin, which you don't even know which one you'll get. Because when you go to the, uh, because if you want to buy their uh buy the skin you have to buy a chest or whatever it costs like 500 gems 500 gems is like uh ten dollars right and that gives you a chance to get a skin and because there's so many members uh in the band some of the skins have been duped up on the bands on the gods themselves so or tripled up so you see here we have a uh, sh shot sh shack <laughs> we have shack here got three skins for it we got poseidon here three skins raijin three skins so three of them uh um chalk okay Okay. I, was, I was intentionally saying it wrong. Just to be funny. Um, <clears throat> so you have a chance to get them for any one of these. Or you could get a duplicate for a god that you already use. If you're someone who specializes in one god or whatever. Um, so 
some people are a little upset about this because yeah, it's just like, all right, well, like three of the skins or basically it's three sets of skins. So it's not even like there's nine skins. It's kind of like three with some mild variations between some of them. Um, this is this is a this is it's an expensive it's an expensive purchase if you want to get all it's like a hundred bucks if you want to buy all of them but this is this is the typical this is the typical free to play like setup right they got a cool deal with Slipknot and everything but it's pretty pricey to like and also they have real voices for three of them that they didn't get for the rest I don't know why maybe the voice for the other guys sucked or something like that doesn't really translate well or something but. I mean, whatever they made the decision to only get a few of them. So it does. I mean, like you're saying, but like, it does feel kind of like like a half ass approach at what could be a could have been a pretty cool promotion. Uh, I mean, we've seen <clears throat> like with Fortnite, we've seen plenty of like pop stars grace that that stage. Right. Justin Bieber was there. Waka Faka Flame or whatever was there. Um, like there's tons of like concerts that happen in the game itself. Uh, that are part of these really cool like cross promotions that uh, that Fortnite or that Epic has set up with these groups, and then high res comes around. Yeah, half ass is the high res way. Yeah, and they 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 nail a really cool deal, but then don't follow through with it the way they should. So. <clears throat> Maybe in the future somebody will ask to flip the whole thing and make it work. People were saying that about about that about that uh, uh, Glory Heroes. They were saying, "Hey, this is like Paladins 2. <laughs> the game they've been looking for." Uh, even in Breath of the Waifu, they tried to do a Horizon Zero Dawn crossover, and they they screwed that up as well. Uh, people make jokes about how much Craig doesn't talk, uh, so not having his voice would be in character. <laughs> yeah, they could they could totally do that. So, <clears throat> yeah, more. More crossovers to come though. This is a good one. This is a, this is one that um, I mean I know that a few of you guys play this game. Uh, I know that overall it's been known it's been known that this would be a pretty good crossover, but it just never happened. Well, Eve and Microsoft Excel are teaming up <laughs> to allow you to manage your in-game experience directly with Excel. Instead of having to manually or scrape or whatever you were doing before, now they're actually building out the features you need to make it a seamless experience. They are, <clears throat> I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna read this paragraph here because it's pretty funny. It is a brazenly honest admission of what the game is, followed as it was by a solid 30 minutes of lads standing on stage in front of line graphs describing everything from regional ore mining yields to ship construction rates over time and fair play, the Excel collab received uproarious applause, a sign both that EVE players are able to poke fun at their own reputation while admitting, yes, they'd be quite nice to, to apply formal business tools to their space empires. <laughs> they are creating an API so that you can access all this stuff from your Excel spreadsheet. You can interface the two and have them share data. That is, that is wonderful. These are the types of deals that we need, right? This, these are the kind of like crossovers <laughs> that benefit the players. I mean, well, I mean, like El says, it's like it probably should have been done 12 years ago. We've always joked about how how it's 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 a spreadsheet game. I love how it even says it says spreadsheets in space in spreadsheets. <laughs> all these Western microtransaction heavy games are going really hard and trying to emulate the gotcha experience with all these weird crossovers. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're working on a custom API for Excel. Probably Phil Spencer's idea. Genius guy. I actually kicked out a I kicked out a, a Phil Spencer video or a, a segment. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll revisit that. We'll see how much time we have at the end. Uh, I played for four years and had a good time. Mostly helps the higher up leadership, but it is awesome. These are the things we need. Games sh should just be work. That's what we need. Games should just be work. So that's um uh, that was announced. That was announced at uh, CCP Fest or CCP, whatever it's called. CCP? Yeah, CCP. Um <clears throat> And fans, fans are very excited, very excited. Uh, resume material, extensive experience with Excel integration with APIs. 
Oh, man. So, moving on. We have... Uh, um, did you guys know that, one, Sonic 2 came out, and two, that Sonic 2 is the highest grossing video game movie of all time. It's the top grossing video game movie of all time. Sonic 2. I haven't watched it yet. I thought Sonic 1 would be it, but apparently Sonic 2 is the, sh is the shit now. So, <clears throat> number two is Uncharted. Maybe, yeah. Is it Jim's, it's Jim's last movie? <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's like it's I'm probably Doom or something. Is it? Oh, it is. Okay, okay. Uh, do people actually like Sonic Two. It doesn't matter as long as they get in there and they watch it, and help secure a Sonic Three. So a Sonic Three is confirmed. Uh, Sega, who's just like making all the best decisions possible, they pulled out of a and maybe we covered this news. I'm not sure. They pulled out of all their arcade setups or the arcade business in Japan. And a lot of people were like, oh, no, you leave the arcade business uh, to focus on whatever else. Right. Um, and, you know, they have the Sonic movie. They have a bunch of games planned for this year. They have a lot of games planned for this year and going forward. They're just, I, you know, we give we gave I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but like I know I gave Sega shit for like dropping the Dreamcast because I thought the Dreamcast was superior to. Uh, to the PlayStation uh, and the Xbox. I was like, Dreamcast is, is I mean, the controller could have used a little bit of work, but it's just, the fucking controller, like I was holding a pie plate or something with a little, uh, what are the little amiibo thingy or whatever, the little <laughs> camera, little things you feed. Anyways, so it's, they, <clears throat> I gave them shit because I was, I was like, oh man, like they, they, they're just, they're just getting out all these businesses and everything instead of really following through but i mean sega might not be around today if they hadn't made some of these decisions um and yeah that's true the xbox control need to work too yeah they're kind of the same they control some spaceship shit yeah tamagotchi thank you uh, uh Martha, i don't know mike will get the konami news oh what is this Konami pump up pachinko machines oh i haven't seen that um so yeah they're they're looking at a pretty good year with Sonic movie, they have their super games that we reported on. They're going to be taking a whole bunch of their IPs, like what was it, Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio. And they're going to be expanding them, putting a lot of money into them, expanding them and creating um, uh, uh, super games, they're calling them. So this has just been a really good, this has just been a really good couple of years or a couple of decades, really, for Sega somehow. Uh, <laughs> just to be the ones that just continually make money and doing and just making correct decisions. You want a crazy taxi VR game? I don't know what they're going to do. Like they just said that they're going to be expanding on these titles to create like a full immersive experience. Not an immersive, but a full experience. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know what that means. It just sounds like it just sounds like exec speak to me. Like, well, what's the experience? What are the details? Right. Is my inventory, my RPG just going to be a little bit easier to manage or is this going to be adding NFTs or is it going to be sound like they're trying uh, to say that uh, not to say metaverse integration. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Konami had the best every year. Thanks to the games you've never heard of. Oh, Konami had a good year too, huh? For games you've never heard of. How funny. Let me go pop this open real quick. I mean, we got some positive news. We could throw this in there, right? Let me see. Uh, Metal Gear. What? Let me see. It says Konami has announced in its last financial year. Sorry, uh, last financial year uh, was the most profitable company's history by a huge distance. The Japanese publishers operating. Okay, we'll over the numbers. Despite the perception among some that Konami doesn't make games anymore and is basically a pachinko business, the final. Oh well, that's probably why they're making so much money. Uh, <laughs> a big recent success, for example, is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, released on Steam in January. The free-to-play game has since amassed over 30 million players and will doubtless uh, be be kept going for m many years to come. But Konami's also had a big hit with Ma uh, Montaro Dentetsu, which is only available on Switch in Japan, and sold over 3.5 million, which is a lot, considering they only sold it in Japan. That's good numbers. Um, <clears throat> huh. Basically, what is it? It's basically a cheery board game about train stations. So yeah, wow, good. So they're they're doing well too. I mean, Se Sega, Konami, these classic like video game, uh, <laughs> like uh, just brands are just being relatively successful while the other ones are like buying and trading each other to to whoever they can be absorbed by or whoever they can absorb through acquisitions or whatever. Uh, this is not even the news I was talking about, Martha. It was talking about the Silent Hills leaks. Oh, I heard about the Silent Hill images were leaked and then they end up taking them down. But we're not going to cover that. We're going to keep moving. Here we go. Moving on. We got bigger news to cover. Like, for example, 
Fall Guys. <laughs> Fall Guys has a big announcement. <laughs> Monday, May 16th, 1 p.m. That's 10 a.m. Pacific time. 6 p.m. Parts of Europe time. So after you get off work or whatever, or on your way home, tune in. We don't know what it is. But I was curious. I saw this and I was like, wow, what is Fall Girls? <laughs> it's just going to be a name change or something, right? Uh, man, poor Phil getting bumped for Fall Guy. <laughs> Coming to mobile? What happened? Yeah, so I, I pulled up the numbers because I was curious. I was like, wow, how has this game been doing lately? And, you know, it looks like it looks like any other game release is just like their their trend just took longer to actually come into fruition. Right. This is the peak daily channels. <clears throat> you can see it started off. It was huge. And then it slowly tapered down. Now, I mean, it's still a good amount. One hundred and six channels are streaming it like any any game developer would be feeling pretty good about one hundred and six average channels like streaming their game per day. Like this is pretty, it's still not, I mean, it's not where they were, where the peak at their peak, they're at, uh, almost 4,000 average channels, average playing their game at any given time. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not quite that, but they've already made the sales on that game and they already had lots of DLC that's come out. You see all these spikes, all the seasons and everything. The seasons are slowly losing, uh, losing some of their gusto, but you know, it's, it is what it is. It's big in uh, English speaking countries and Spanish speaking countries, uh, about equal there and everybody else. <clears throat> so whatever this is that they plan on announcing, I hope it's something that's like transformative or just really big and not just like, I don't know, a season. I mean, they wouldn't do this for a season, right? Airbnb said oh, tomorrow Airbnb is changing completely. And then that was like what Tuesday or whatever. And then it happened and it was just like a, an app redesign. They redesigned the app and they added the ability to book two, two Airbnbs back to back and split your trip, which I already do anyways, by literally just booking two Airbnbs back to back. So it was, it was relatively whelming, but also pretty underwhelming. Um, and so I hope that this doesn't go the same way. <laughs> I mean, you kind of need something. Fall Guys was a fun game. It's a fun game. It's just once you play it, you know, for a couple hours, you kind of have played it. <clears throat> Might be ahead of times already. That's right. You say, well, that Fall Guys player base on Nintendo Switch. Oh, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know. I, I look at the stream numbers because to me, the stream numbers tells me like what the overall um, excitement level around the game is. Yeah, you play it for a very short time and then never. I, we were kind of the same way. We played it for like a few, I think we played it for like two sub nights or something. Um, and then that was it. We got our fix. So whatever, whatever is coming out, it has to be, like I said, transformative in order for it to really have any kind of impact on the numbers that have been trending downward lately. So so we will we will see. We will see. Um, but Discord. Discord has a thing going on right now that it's not part of my notes um, where they're celebrating a birthday, I think seventh year, I'm not sure. Uh, and you could set up party mode. So when you type in Discord, it will rattle off a bunch of confetti and everything. And it'll show you your combo, your combo score and everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about this, uh, this, this testing that they're doing with a, um, uh, inter not internally, but to, with uh, with some communities with premium memberships, premium memberships that are Discord server based, right? So, as an example, if slash when this becomes available, and I set it up for for our channel, I can make it so that certain channels are behind a paywall. Now, as it stands right now, almost the entire server is behind some kind of a paywall, right? You're either subbed here, you're subbed to Patreon, or uh, you sent me nudes or something. So it's, it's, it's already gated somehow, and Discord is looking at ways to potentially bring some of that gating earnings in-house. That's why I have access. 
<laughs> so they they show here you sign up you get different tiers and everything that you can um that you can uh, have people subscribe to it seems like and my first reaction was like ah, oh, i'm not gonna give discord any more money but like people already pay money and i pay money to have access to certain discords so it's kind of like it just kind of keeps it all in discord uh what's a discord cut that's a great question. I didn't look at that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Select a different tier. Uh, you can ask for a refund. Oh, it doesn't say anything. Okay, so it's it's a it's a it's a closed test that they're doing right now. They probably have, they probably haven't uh, uh, solidified what it's going to be. Also, do they collect VAT? How do they pay out, etc. There's no other details. There, it's just what is a premium membership? Can you ask for a refund? How can I subscribe? And after that's it, you can put, I mean, in this little gift right here, uh, that, let me see, can I, can I, can I, can I pause it? No. Um, you can see VIP green room, green room, VIP screening room, VIP resources. Like you can set up VIP rooms. So when people do subscribe to whatever tier it is, they have access to these different rooms. Um, like, let's just use my discord as an example, right? It's our discord, but my name's on it. Um, I could put like, all the general games, like Bro Games General, all the threads below it, behind a paywall, and then I can open up the rest of the server or something. And that way, <clears throat> people who already have access, will already have access, but people who want to pay, who don't want to just subscribe on Twitch or anywhere else, they can go and pay internally on Discord and have access to those same channels. Um, I'm willing to bet it's probably going to be tag-based, right? Like role-based. So you assign a role to somebody that has this. If it's not role-based, that might cause some conflict. And actually, I feel like would kind of make the, because this is moving too much, uh, it would make the service uh, have a little less value because the value, the value add is like, can you integrate your exist parts of your existing community into an already existing paying community and if you have to use special rooms that are only allotted to people who are of a certain tier and you can't give those roles or have them assigned to other people like it's some new system or something and managing your members then that would depreciate the value of it because now well i'm not gonna have like a discord paying only group Right? Does that make sense? Because in their example, they show VIP hyphen and then the name, which could just be the test. But we don't know yet because there's no information. We have a 9 10 split, meaning you were saying 90% of the money of each membership and Discord keep 10%. Oh, there it is. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing the work, Jai Rule. Jai Rule, report from the front lines. 90 10 split. It's pretty good. <clears throat> Delete the room, remakes the room. Yeah, we'll see what, uh, what, what the details are, more details in terms of like how they function when they're actually applied. Um, but I feel like this is kind of a good thing. I feel like it is a good thing. You know, it's like Discord has been very good to us. It's to me, to a lot of folks. Uh, it's it's just a, it's like the modern day forums, really. It's just a place where everyone could go and just congregate. Shit just sometimes just happens. Um, there's lots of different categories, things you could do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you, Top. I don't see, I don't see intrusive ads. I'm happy. Yeah, just as long as they don't go this route, where you can serve an ad or something like that on top of every one of your, your um uh your channels then great i mean there's plenty of space for a banner across the top of every channel right they could go that route but i feel like discord knows that that would be really bad uh to be to be uh, honest i'd like to support you on the platform which enables you to get the most money out of it appreciate that well i also want to make sure you get some you know some cool emotes <laughs> until elon musk buys it do oh! <laughs> Elon must ruin everything. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's all I have noted. But there are some rumblings re in regards to Phil Spencer, uh, which was brought up. I don't know if this is related to what you were talking about, kittens, but there's been some turbulence uh, in the Xbox space. Bethesda announced that they were going to be putting uh, Starfield and Redfall, two games that they're working on. Um, Bethesda is now owned by Microsoft, if you forgot. Right? They're just buying everything up. Uh, and they said they're going to put it on hold until, not on hold, it's delayed until early next year. So now this is this is a big deal, right? I mean, it's 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 a big game. It's getting delayed, right? Anytime we have a uh, a big game delay, it makes news. Remember, remember the big yellow 
cyber cyberpunk 2077 meme that floated around well bethesda was pretty smart about it they try to make it as boring as possible so they wouldn't get memed on so they say here we made a decision to delay launches a redfall and starfield first half of 2023 um and it says you know basically it sucks but thank you for your support Phil Spencer uh, uh, quote retweets that says these decisions are hard on teams uh, making the games and our fans. While I fully support giving teams time to release these great games when they are ready, we hear the feedback. Delivering quality and consistency is expected. We will continue to work to better meet those expectations. I didn't use the yellow. Yes, smart. This is only the first delay. Exactly. Magic Mike owes me money for predicting Starfield. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 a um, every game gets delayed at least twice. Yeah, and these are two big games that they're working on. So yeah, they're they're gonna get delayed for sure. Uh, don't let employees burn out. Yeah, let them go. So so this has caused a lot of uh, a lot of people making comments on Phil Spencer operating uh, being the operating overseer uh, in the Xbox realm right as it stands right now there are no i guess there are no like first party games which i guess a first party game would also include any of these other studios that are already owned by microsoft um slated for the rest of the of this year for xbox meanwhile playstation has like nine exclusives or something coming out over this next year some change or whatever so it, it really 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 is a is reflecting pretty poorly on phil spencer in terms of how he manages things um internally whether it's him making the decisions or they just have bad project managers or whatever people are really upset at him um to me it feels like if he is and it's it's been noted elsewhere if he is making a lot of these decisions personally like he's actually getting in there and making a lot of these decisions on what should go what should not go what should get delayed what should not get delayed and where they stand on, on all this stuff for so many different studios which are working on so many different games that becomes a problem because now you're micromanaging at a level that you really shouldn't be as the person who's up here right so <clears throat> uh David David Jaff, I think it's Jaff J A F F E, uh, who is uh, known for God of War and Twisted Metal. He put out a he actually is very active on on YouTube, uh, and he put out a video talking about. Um, you heard this a little bit during the opening today. Uh, he talks a little bit about 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 Phil Spencer. Uh, this is what I was referencing. Yeah, not sure how the guy turns it into this sort of attack on Phil. So, yeah, so here we go. Listen to this. You suck, Phil Spencer. You, you are like the guy who is like, okay, let me, let me, this is, you are me when I was 28. Okay. I knew I could design. I knew I could have commercial ideas, at least at that time. My, my brain was di directly plugged into the zeitgeist. It took me all of seven, eight, nine months to realize I could not produce a game at all, let alone a game that I was also directing. It was a game called Dark Guns. We wasted $2 million of Sony's money. It never shipped. It allowed me to meet some brilliant people that went on to make God of War possible, like Mark Anderson and Shannon Studstill. But more importantly to me, it allowed me to realize there are things we're good at, even great at, and things we're not. Go get some therapy, uh, Phil Spencer. You're not good at this part. You're just not. You don't get to be that guy. That's the only thing I can think of. And I don't mean to say this like I'm being jokey, but short of someone having some pictures like a dossier, like Trump, they said they had on Trump where, he, you know, he went to Russian prostitutes and paid him to pee all over him. I mean, maybe that's what but I'm not even joking, because short of that, the only explanation for this is is ego. Dude, this is not a one off. This is so chronic that the fact that you are you are so far beyond the part where you tweet will try to do better. We hear your feedback. We understand quality and consistency is expected. You think, you think in your position running one of the biggest video game companies on the planet, you think it's nice you finally come around in 2022 to the fact that, you know, your your, your customers expect, oh my God, what do you call those? We'll, we'll stop there. 
anyways, he goes, though he's, he's very vocal on, he, he's a three hour VOD, right? And he has tons of videos on YouTube. Uh, who hurt this guy? No, but no, I mean, like, we shouldn't discount his opinion because he's coming off as just like some guy in a dark room ranting at his camera, right? Like, this, this, this guy made one of the top 25 PlayStation 2 games of all time. Two of them, I think. Twisted Metal and God of War. So, like, this is, this, he's, he's not a nobody. Right, he's been in this industry for a while, and I think what he's saying makes a lot of sense. Like he's he's trying to impart some wisdom while also telling him, "Fucking stop doing what you're doing." Uh, I would fully expect that Phil has final proof on delays, ship dates, and takes responsibility for it. But I'd be shocked if he goes to level of micromanaging on a studio level. I would be shocked there as well, right? But like he's mentioned, I hate to pause on this on this here, but like like he says. It's like this is a chronic thing. Like there's there's just not a lot of releases coming out for I mean, the X the new Xbox launch without a without a title, right? Halo Halo Infinite is like is is getting like panned right now by people. Where's guns? Tell me guns, tell me how you feel about Halo Infinite, right? Like it's 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 just not looking like Phil Spencer, somebody who everybody thinks is like, yeah, he's the dude, is running things the way he should. Um Perhaps someone with so much information on so many studios would have a better picture of good release dates. Phil has talked about, uh, that his main job is traveling to meet with smaller studios. So I feel like this is potentially like, you know, like this is, this is, this is a bad look. Essentially. Guns is too busy playing EQ to be here right now. <laughs> Why does he do this? Yeah, this is a bad, this is a bad look for, uh, for Xbox, I, I mean, it was trending earlier today. Um, uh, Phil Spencer was trending today, and it was just full of just vitriol, and people were just really upset that you know why would you do this to? He's like, honestly, oh here, we go. I'm actually curious what Kokarner just said. Let me see. Uh, Kokarner says uh, honestly, I don't think many people expect this game to be out this year. Not going to be surprised at a second delay either. Don't crunch the devs. Yeah, the only thing many probably of us care about is quality of the release. Oh, there you go, Co. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> So we're just getting the Netflix model. Let's see. Absolutely had to be a brutally difficult to call to make. Yep. Thanks to Benji Sales. I love Benji Sales. He's really great when it comes to uh, to like sales metrics and everything. If you want to follow him on Twitter. Um, how is Bethesda delaying a game surprising it to anybody? <laughs> it's Bethesda there. No for releasing buggy games. Delay is a good call. Yes, it is a good call. It is a good call. It just comes at a bad time. Xbox doesn't have a whole lot of things lined up. Right? It, it, it just it just seems like there's just not really a whole lot from the Microsoft camp. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of acquisitions that they made, but no actual titles that are coming into fruition. There's um, a, a Double Fine, I think, right? It was a Double Fine or whatever. Yeah, Double Fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, they don't have anything that they resurrected, but nothing's coming out of that yet. Um, there, I mean, there's every other company they've acquired is still not doing anything. Like, they don't have anything to show for it yet. Um, they have as much as Sony and Nintendo at the moment. Nobody has any games. Well, okay, yes, it's true. Nobody has any games. It's true, like PlayStation Five also is a bit of a drought. Uh, but they have Final Fantasy Remake, so you know it's kind of like a whole lot of games. One doesn't matter if Xbox has nothing new at the moment. I mean, it's it's not like Sony is coming on strong. So Sony has a lot more planned on paper. Uh, Sony also has the uh, larger share, the larger market share. Um, then Xbox, with some numbers that were released and showed that uh, Xbox is actually in third place in terms of their uh, Xbox live service numbers or game pass and all that stuff. Um, so this position is safe as long as game pass is doing fine. That's what they care about. True. Yeah. And that's something to point out too. I'm not trying to say the guy is like falling behind or anything, but I'm just saying other people are saying that he's falling behind and some of the numbers kind of support that. If you're not say when all these decisions pay off, you always say first day picks up and then make a U-turn. Here we go. Xbox one launch lineup is the best in console history. Says Microsoft Bigwig. Uh, Xbox one X promises a strong, stable lineup. Uh, is a Phil Spencer Xbox and best launch lineup position ever with Series X and they reviewed plans yesterday for continued sharing through launch team is doing great work and adopting I've never been more excited about Xbox we've heard you you want transparency authenticity plan to keep showing game oh this doesn't really tell me anything but um, well, we know that, that it launched without a first party title uh, so it feels like pandemic drought and games earlier disruption starting to show yes that was something else I was mentioning in another article I, I ended up ditching it because I wasn't going to cover on the news but then kittens had to mention it uh, but yeah the article goes in a little bit more detail talking about the different titles and everything and the different studios that they have that are not producing anything right now and right it just looks like a really bad drought for first party games from Xbox um, you know PlayStation has a lot of stuff on paper like nine games on paper that they have planned uh, but you know until they actually 
are released, then we don't really know if that really means it. I mean, they can also go through a bunch of delays and then they're kind of in the same boat. But, you know, for, for somebody who is so prominent in the, uh, in the space, um, to be making, uh, you know, such a, I mean, it's a very passionate plea to, uh, you know, Phil Spencer, um, you know, passionate, <laughs> you need, you need therapy. <laughs> uh, I just felt like that's, that's a kind of a big deal. Like this is, this is, Something to keep an eye on. You, uh, yeah, all those all those quotes that were said, just wordle, uh, worldwide pandemic. Hit. Yeah, Jim Ryan uh, has more heat on him than Spencer at the moment. Jim Ryan, this article I actually pulled out also. Jim Ryan is the uh, CEO of PlayStation or Sony, uh, S-I-E, um, Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sony Interactive Entertainment, yeah. Uh, and he sent out an email to his staff or to everybody. Uh, and he said, I don't have it here, but, uh, uh, well, I don't think it's public, but Bloomberg saw it and they reported on it uh, talking about the Roe versus the Roe v. Wade leak that happened with SCOTUS. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Roe v. Wade basically establishes that um, uh, federally it is not illegal for a woman to seek out uh, a health care treatment as it relates to, um, uh, you know, the an unborn fetus, whatever that entails. Right. It's it's a little more nuanced. I'm just kind of pulling off the top of my head. But. Basically, it makes it so that abortion federally cannot be uh, made uh, illegal to a certain degree or something. Anyway, so it was really it was leaked a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago that SCOTUS may be flipping on that, which is a super big deal. It's a super, super big deal. Um, and so every other game company has been coming out with their own takes because every game company now has to have has to have a take when it comes to current events uh and it's no it's by no fault of their own except for the fact that they actually follow through with giving their take right there's a lot of pressure from a lot of groups who want they they see a controversial subject that comes up and they're like and they look to these companies that have absolutely nothing to do with the industry or anything where this other controversy is taking place and they ask for their take on it because they want they want to be able to judge that company and their values based on whether or not they align with their own values. Does that make sense? So every company is succumbing to this and they're putting out their own take on whatever the current top button topic is. Um, uh, Bungie came out and they said that they support you know, maintaining women's rights and all that stuff. It sounds weird saying that, but <laughs> that's effectively what they said. Uh, and uh, Jim Ryan, the, the CEO of SIE, uh, came out and said that um, that they, we respect everybody's opinions on both sides. Uh, and then he went on to discuss uh, that he has two cats that have birthdays this year and he's thinking about getting a dog um, and um we should look at the brighter side of things or something. And, you know, this is such a controversial subject matter that when you pair your cat's birthdays in with this controversial subject, it it gives this feeling of you're playing down the severity of it simply because you want to, oh, well, on a lighter note, we can try to look to the bright side of life and the grass is greener and whatever. Um, feels rather dystopian to look toward corporations for leadership instead of government. It does, doesn't it? So, uh, so yeah, Jim Ryan also opened his mouth where he shouldn't have. He probably has his own beliefs. I'm sure he does. I'm sure a lot of these very rich people who are in these very like high positions within companies probably have a very different belief system than what those of us down here have. Whether it's what their views are on, on on gay marriage or whether women should have rights or whatever, everybody has a different opinion. They should probably just shut the fuck up about it and not insert their foot in their mouth every opportunity they get because they have to respond to something. Why do you feel like I had to share it? Just, I mean, one of the comments was like, what am I supposed to do with this information? And I was like, and I relate to that. It's like, what are we, what are we supposed to do with this information? He just gave us information that was like, okay, well... What do we do with this now? Like, thank you for telling us that you're an asshole, right? <laughs> I'm sure there's some people who are like, thank you for telling us that you're a hero, right? But you can also just shut the fuck up and not have any judgment passed on you. It's not like you should add a PR proofread the email first. Send this cat a card. Uh, we are just finally learning to cut out the middleman as the corpse are already running the go a government. Yeah. So yeah, Jim Ryan also uh, uh, not scoring too well. Social media. 
So, you know, I mean, this, you know, Phil Spencer, Jim Ryan, I mean, everyone's kind of having a rough, uh, rough week. Elon Musk, everyone's kind of having a rough week. This is what happens when the money just like evaporates from a market that doesn't really make sense anyways. <laughs> or the money just disappears and reappears willy nilly. Uh, yeah, those things have an effect. The market's up. Why? Because it's up. Okay. <laughs> anyways, that's it for the news. Thank you for participating today. Chat, my lovely chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are the best. Whoop, whoop. Say goodbye to YouTube. YouTube. Oh, I forgot. I forgot my song. Did I hit the button? There we go. No. This one. <laughs> oh, I forgot my song. I got used to it. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. This is the news. We do this every other week. Follow me on all the things, a.k.a. Mike B, a.k.a. Mike B. Be photos, uh, photo, photos, photos, <laughs> and also AK Mike Beats on TikTok. Follow my TikTok. All right, it's the future. Somehow. <laughs> All right, you guys be good. Bye. Perfect outro. Perfect outro.